Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The topic of our discussion today is Turner syndrome. And what is Turner syndrome? Turner syndrome is basically a chromosomal condition that affects the development in females and has got a number of physical and psychological impacts. So let us start our topic from the incidence of Turner syndrome. The incidence of Turner syndrome in a general population is 1 in 2000 to 4000. And what is the carrier type of Turner syndrome? The carrier type of Turner syndrome is 45XO. There are mosaicism in the Turner syndrome which include 45XO and 46XX. Now, what features of the Turner syndrome make it the most common cause of that specific condition? First of all, the Turner syndrome is the most common female sex chromosome aneuploidy. Secondly, the Turner syndrome is the most common cause of primary amenorrhea. If you want to study primary amenorrhea causes, go to the link in the i button in the top right corner of this video. And while Turner syndrome is the most common cause of primary amenorrhea, the MRKH is the second most common cause of primary amenorrhea. In contrast, if we talk about secondary amenorrhea, the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea is polycystic ovarian disease. That was just for your general information. Let us talk about the clinical features of the Turner syndrome. The clinical features of Turner syndrome include, first of all, the short stature. Secondly, webbed neck. Then, ovarian hypofunction, premature ovarian failure, cortation of aorta, bicuspid aortic wall, streak ovaries as an example of gonadal dysgenesis, means the Turner syndrome is an example of gonadal dysgenesis because of streak ovaries. Let us talk about the treatment of Turner syndrome. We will treat the patient by emphasizing all these important points. First of all, the need for the growth hormones as these patients have got short stature. So for that, human growth hormone is given. Second point is about hormone replacement therapy. And I will talk about the types of hormone later on. Third management point is about the fertility issues in these patients for which we use the assisted reproductive techniques that include IVF and ICSI. Now let us talk a little bit about the recommended estrogen replacement options for feminization in adolescent Turner syndrome. And those include first of all transdermal E2. The pubertal initial dose of transdermal E2 is 3 to 7 microgram per day and the adult dose is 25 to 100 microgram per day. The second estrogen preparation is micronized 17 beta oral E2 and the pubertal dose is 0.25 mg per day and the adult dose is 1 to 4 mg per day. The third preparation is ethanyl estradiol, the pubertal dose of which is 2 microgram per day and the adult dosing is 10 to 20 microgram per day. The last one is depo E2 which is given in the pubertal dose of 0.2 mg per month and the adult dosing is 2 mg per month. Now this table show the incidence of phenotypes in the Turner syndrome and you can see on the top we have short stature that is present in almost 100% cases of the Turner syndrome. Infertility is present in 98% of the cases and primary gonadal failure means primary ovarian failure is present in 95% of the cases. Also we have other problems like osteoporosis, cubitus, vulgus, low posterior hairline, carbohydrate intolerance, high blood pressure short metacarpals, high arch palate, structural abnormalities in the kidney, hypothyroidism and you can see their percentages in this chart. And that brings us to the end of my presentation. I would like to complete it with these golden words. You don't get results by focusing on the results. You get the results by focusing on the actions that produce the results. So focus on your goals as the big results require big ambition. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.